Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. This is our special Likeable Science series in collaboration with the University of Hawaii's College of Social Sciences. And uh, I think this is the second, uh, second one in this series. With me today from the Department of Economics, I have uh, Nori Taru, Taru, Ui, excuse me, Taru, uh, <laughs> professor there, and also associated with UHERO, right? Yes. The UH Economic Research Organization. University of Hawaii Economic Research Organization. Okay. And graduate student, Ash uh, Asahi Oshiro. Hi. Hi. Uh, getting ready to get her doctorate in economics, right? I just graduated oh. this semester, actually. Oh, excellent. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. And they're doing a fascinating uh, uh, piece of work right now. They're looking at something that, you know, likable science is all about why, how people relate to science and all. And we all use electricity in our lives, right? And we all pay our electric bills. Mm -hmm. And you guys are looking at sort of how those two factors play uh, against one another, right? That's right, yeah. And you're doing this in collaboration with the Hawaiian Electric Company <coughs> because, of course, they've got all this data, right? They're the ones who gather the data on the electricity used mm -hmm. and the um, bills that are paid, right? So <coughs> why don't you go ahead and, and tell us maybe a little bit about this, this study, how it came about, and, and how long it's been going on and all. Yes, yeah. As you mentioned, Ethan, uh, so this is an outcome of uh, like a lot of exciting collaboration between uh, Hawaii Electric Company and uh, University of Hawaii at Manoa, in particular, uh, economic research organization, UHERO. And uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Dennis Conan, she's now the dean of the College of Social Sciences. She started to initiate uh, collaboration efforts with Hawaii Electric Company about uh, like seven, eight years ago. I joined the team about uh, three years ago, and right after that, Asahi joined the team. And uh, so the way it works is that uh, we send our graduate students to Hawaii Electric Company, and students would work with uh, the data, the confidential uh, proprietary data that Hawaii Electric provides and uh, provide data analysis services that would be useful for Hawaiian Electric Company, mm -hmm. and at the same time, that would be a useful academic input for, uh, in the form of uh, students' dissertation research. Oh, great. It's a great win-win collaboration. Then. Exactly. They, get, they get extra services from people like you, basically, <laughs> and you get rich data to mine and, and exactly. do your research. Wonderful. And graduate. Yeah, okay. <laughs> With a degree. So you've got a, a shocking dissertation then, right? Sorry. I, I, I hope it's, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, and so what, what's sort of the driving question of this work? Okay, so the, uh, the basic motivation of this uh, effort is that, uh, I think as many of the audience would, might know, the uh, state of Hawaii has a very ambitious uh, uh, clean energy goal with 100% uh, renewable energy by uh, 2045. And uh, so what we see is that uh, as more and more renewable energy is used, uh, the ways in which uh, the utility company operates might change, and also the ways in which uh, customers, consumers, pay for electric bills uh, might change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, what was your particular piece of this work? So what I do is that as I act as a data analyst um, that's sent from the University of Hawaii, and I get the professional experience, and um, you know, I get a lot of hands-on experience, I would say, um, with the data, and then I present, some, I present an analysis that would benefit both Hawaiian, Elec uh, Hawaiian Electric Company and myself as part of the dissertation process, I would say. I think it was a good experience because not a lot of students, you know, get the, get the chance to be able to be able to work in a, you know, professional environment and be able to have a lot of hands-on experience. Sure. No, that sounds like that would be great. Uh, you know, most graduate students spend their time out in the field or buried in a lab somewhere. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, not up in the real it's world. It's yeah. a good experience. Yeah. You get to talk to the other professionals in the field as well, so I think that was another benefit yeah, that I got. Always yeah, exactly. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> So um, why don't we jump on into this and, and start, start looking at what it is you found, and, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. Yeah. sure. We got a f first image here. Okay. So in our uh, project, uh, we look at uh, the electricity consumption in uh, the business sector 
uh, in on Honolulu. So okay. we look at uh, various different types of sectors, such as uh, department stores and others. Uh, so what you are looking at uh, the profile of electricity consumption and how it changes uh, within a day from midnight to morning, noon, afternoon to midnight, and also uh, over uh, seven days of a typical week uh, in 2014 in this case. Okay, so this is uh, a department store here. Yes. A very regular pattern we're seeing every day, sort of peaking rather steeply early in the day, staying plateauing during the day and dropping off in the evening. Exactly. Right, yeah, uh, I think you made a, a good point about uh, the picture. So one thing that we noticed is that uh, within a day, uh, the electricity consumption fluctuates a lot. The department stores, when it's open, it uses lots of electricity for air conditioning and other purposes. But during the nighttime, it's closed and doesn't use much electricity. At the same time, we see that uh, for seven days a week, uh, this, this fluctuation seems to be fairly consistent. Right. Right, this is a stri strikingly even graph here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so this is with department stores. Yes. And then the next image. Yeah. But uh, not all business sectors are alike. Right. Yeah. This so one here, surprised me, the hospitals. Yes. So here we see that with hospitals on, uh, in Honolulu, uh, we see similar cycles and fluctuations. But uh, within a day, the, the uh, extent of fluctuation is smaller. Right. And also, uh, on the weekends, we see that uh, the consumption of electricity is much lower right. than in, during the weekdays. Yeah, that's, that, that surprised me that you'd see that dramatic difference. I, I, mm -hmm. I guess people don't want to be in the hospital over the weekend, right? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Great, yeah, interesting. Uh, the next one. Okay, uh, so why do we care about those uh, fluctuations in electricity consumption? Well, that's because uh, if you look at the cost of electricity generation, mm -hmm. uh, that change quite a bit uh, over a day and uh, over a month and across seasons and years. And uh, that's because uh, electric companies would uh, need to activate like more expensive uh, power plants when the demand for electricity is higher. Okay. Uh, so you're looking at the picture of uh, the red color indicates the actual uh, price that uh, the business customers pay. Uh, so it's flat. Uh, it, Regardless of uh, the cost of generation, okay. uh, typically the, the electricity rate is fixed. Right. Uh, but at the same time, if you look at the red color curve, you see that uh, hour by hour, the cost of electricity generation is different. Right, right. There, there, there was the other line varied a good deal, right? Super. Um, so that suggests that, that there's a sort of mismatch, right? They're paying a very constant rate that is not reflective of the actual cost that it costs an electric company to produce that power, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay. Should we move on to the next picture? Sure. Uh, so, uh, well, you mentioned uh, the discrepancy, but uh, so this discrepancy is going to matter a lot as the state of Hawaii pursues its renewable energy target. And uh, in such future with a lot of electric renewable energy uh, going in, uh, it will be better from uh, the society's point of view to uh, align uh, the consumption uh, pattern and the generation patterns, mm -hmm. uh, taking into account the uh, ever-changing cost of electricity generation. Sure. So, so walk us through here. You've got some, some different uh, industries, you could call them, the education, hospitals, mm -hmm. grocery, hotels, and merchandise. And they all seem to have these two lines, one says current and one says alternate. So why? why one of the patterns different, and mm -hmm. two are sometimes the, the blue line, the alternate is on top, is higher, and sometimes it's lower. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would like to answer this sure. one, especially because this was one of the outputs of my efforts at Hawaiian Electric Company. And, you know, just to briefly explain, most of my research is focused on the commercial and industrial. That's why I have the five big sectors there, right. you know, the education to the merchandise. And so what I did here was that, so as um, Professor Tyree mentioned that, you know, what would um, the bills look like if we didn't have a flat rate structure, as okay. in the previous slide that we saw. So what I did was I calculated what the what the customers bill what the customers bills would be under the, an alternative rate structures, which actually incorporates the hourly 
changes okay. in the generation cost instead of facing just the flat cost, right? right? So that's what you see in the two lines. You see the orange line is, you know, the the estimate of the current bill that they right. see for each sector, and then the blue line is the simulated or the calculated bill that I calculated using the fluctuation in the generation cost for the utility. So why is it that, that some of them, for instance, ed education and hospitals, the alternate scenario is seems to be less expensive, if I'm reading this correctly, but for some others, particularly the, gro the grocery stores, the alternate mm -hmm. scenario is much more expensive. So there are a couple of reasons to this, and this is part of my dissertation <laughs> results. <laughs> and I did find that whether or not a customer's bill increases or decreases under the alternative to bill depends on actually their load share of the total load share by sector. What's so total load share. Um, so, for example, I mean to put it e in e more easy words to understand, I would say it's close to something like uh, how the volume of the electricity that they use okay. is a lot more bigger. Okay, so you're saying. So education, the educational sector would I would say would is a little bit bigger, as you know. They hold a larger share of the right. pie compared to the grocery stores. And actually, I do have a couple of slides. I think, I think the next couple of slides would actually oh. show that share. Okay, let's, let's go to this next one. Okay, yes, here, here is right. Oh, so this one is just zooming in on the educational right. sector. Right. So, it, and it's showing indeed that the current bill uh, is it, higher. Yeah, and that's it's the uh, right. And the, the, this alternate section, if they're really paying for power for the, what it costs to produce, it would be somewhat lower. So they should, exactly. they should the, the school systems and, and should want to go for this structure, right? Ideally, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Asahi raised uh, one big reason why uh, you see differences across sectors. So another reason is, for example, in the case of educational sector, they tend to use lots of electricity during the daytime when the cost of electricity is lower. Uh, so that's perhaps another reason why uh -huh. they tend to ex uh, expect uh, lower electric bills. Okay, okay. And then we, we go on to, uh, I think, a detail on grocery stores in the next image, right? And here, it's it's just reverse now, right? It is reverse. Right. And this is because, you say, because grocery stores are using less overall and also using a, a different pattern. Yeah, exactly. Different patterns. So when you look at how they're they're using electricity during the day, um, it's a little bit different than, for example, the educational sector. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's one of the reasons why you see, you know, the the opposite okay. phenomenon than the educational sector. Right. So they're they're but they're they're not going to vote for this alternate strategy, obviously, <laughs> if it's going to cost them more, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's that, that's intriguing that there's that dramatic a difference. I find. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, particularly because both of them, well, they have some differences there. Basically, again, it's sort of main, their main use is, are, is during the day for both, both mm -hmm. industries, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it does depend on the magnitude of okay. how much they're using in the day as well. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Um, then the next, the next one uh, looks at some of, some of this uh, change in the day. So maybe, uh, again, is this, this one of the uh, things that you Yeah, sure. You, you so this ahead? one, I simulated different types of load, load profiles. So okay. load profiles as in the shape of their consumption. If, if you were to illustrate it <laughs> into a figure, um, for example, education, you see, so the green line is their actual consumption. So that's what, how mm -hmm. they're, that's what their consumption pattern looks like when visually. Right. However, the blue line is the simulated curve that I created based on um, actual data. So you see that when the education sector, or any sector for that matter, is introduced to the alternative rate structure, you know, the one that fluctuates right. based on generation costs, you see that the load shape changes slightly. Right. right, okay. So that's the blue line. Okay. And the, the gray line is the the generation cost that, that we looked at in the previous uh, slides. Okay, that's so. Yeah, and those three things and the actual, the simulated and the and this the real time cost producer are all somewhat different. Particularly, I'm, I'm surprised to see that dramatic difference between the real time cost and you know, and the actual uh, yeah, exactly. How, how that, how that so the green line is right. what their electricity consumption right. pattern looks like under the flat rate schedule. Right. Yeah. 
Interesting. We're gonna we're gonna dig into this more deeply uh, when we come back. But right now we're gonna have to take a break. Uh, Nori Tarui and uh, Asai Oshiro uh, from the UH Department of Economics uh, here talking about uh, electricity use and cost scenarios. We'll be back in one minute. Hey, aloha everybody. Thanks for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Andrew Lanning, the security guy. I host a program called Security Matters Hawaii. And I hope you'll join us on Fridays. Uh, we air at 10 a.m. And we're gonna be talking about those security things that really should be important to you. And you know, maybe get behind the scenes on some, some things that you may not know about the industry or about products or even about your habits. Um, security is all about people, processes, and products, and we hope to bring that to you in an informative and um, hopefully a useful way. So again, 10, 10 a.m. on Fridays, Security Matters Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me. Thank you. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm Ethan Allen, your host here on Think Tech Hawaii. With me today are uh, Nori Turui and Ashiro uh, Asahi. Asahi, <laughs> Ashiro, sorry, uh, from the UH Department of Economics, both, both of them. And we've been talking about electricity usage and rate structure and how, I guess, how each of those impacts one another. And in particular, we've been digging into some of uh, Ashiro, uh, Asahi's work uh, on her dissertation that looks at sort of actual bills that people are paying, actual use patterns that they're doing, and uh, the cost of producing electricity. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at a, a large sort of structure, a large number of those earlier. And we want to dig a little more deeply into one, one of these at this point. So, and I think, yes, next figure. So explain this again in, in a, little, a little more depth so we can really understand this. Sure, so what this graph shows you is we zoom in into the hospital or the medical sector mm -hmm. and the green line shows the actual um, consumption pattern throughout the day. Okay. So this is this graph is based off of a day's okay. consumption. Okay. So midnight to midnight. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Oh. And the blue line shows the simulated consumption pattern. So that's what the consumption pattern would look like under the the alternative rate schedule. Ah, uh, okay. Are, are you saying the usage would actually be higher under? Exactly, okay. yes, okay. because the generation cost is a little bit lower than the current flat rate, as we ah. saw in the previous right. slides. You okay. saw that the red horizontal line was actually a little right. bit higher, so that's why they're consuming a little bit more under this okay. alternative rate schedule. Yeah, and then this, this rather dramatic uh, fluctuations during the, over the course of the day, an actual real-time cost that is a cost to the electric company to produce the power, right? Mm -hmm. so, now, oh. again, why does this vary? So why does it take this dip early in the morning so, so strikingly? Um, so actually this, this generation cost is just for March. Okay. It's not during the year, but specifically for this month, I think you see a dip in the daytime and because it, it could be because of solar uh, uh -huh. energy that's available. So generators don't have to you know, okay. ramp up to meet that daytime oh, okay. usage. Okay, that's, that's, that's very, very intriguing. <laughs> and also uh, compared to like hot summer uh, months, uh, perhaps the demand for air conditioning might be lower during the daytime. Okay. That might also explain the... Right, and then at night you see the higher, the yes. higher exactly. production costs because you're not having any solar feeding into the, gr mm -hmm. into the grid. Okay, I'm, I'm getting to understand this. <laughs> exactly, and that's when people come home from work. Right. That's when they turn on the lights that's, or maybe ramp up the AC as right. well. That's right. why you right. see right. that. Dishwashers, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Water, yes. hot water, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. okay. Laundry, yeah. that's okay. a big one as well. Okay, so another, another look at, at one of the detailed, uh, more detailed comparisons is with the next figure has the merchandise uh, unit. So this is retail stores and all, right? Exactly. Okay. So the reason why we show merchandise um, relative to the hospitals is because, as you can see, the blue line doesn't really change as much as the green line, right. meaning that they don't really shift their consumption under this new rate schedule. Okay. Compared to the to the previous slide where you saw the hospitals, you, you saw that the blue line was a little bit different. Right. 
but here the, the shapes are, are very similar. Are similar, right, exactly. Right. Meaning that they probably do business as usual regardless of the generation cost within the day. Right. And then again, you see the same uh, real-time cost to production, because again, I assume you're using the same, that's, that's yeah, okay. So that, that's intriguing, that's intriguing though, the, 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 the subtle differences between these. Yeah, so what, what Asahi is finding here is that uh, depending on which business sector you look at, uh, the ways in which the business responds to changing the price of electricity, where uh, there's a tendency that you would use less electricity when it's uh, cheaper and uh, excuse me, more expensive so, and more electricity when it's cheaper. Right. Mm -hmm. But that extent can be different if you look at a different business sector. Yeah, okay, okay. Because yeah. they, they have their own operation. You know strategies. Right. Sure, sure, and, and there's different things. But now, obviously, sort of time of day is not is not sort of the only factor, right? There's also time of year, right? As you said, hot summer days, people, everyone's put puts on air conditioning. Nice, cool winter here. People just leave their windows open and let the breezes blow, right? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I think think we get into that in the next figure, if I'm not mistaken. So this this one's got some detail in it. So. You want, you want to break this down for us? So actually, this is another topic that I was involved in. Okay. So you know, the, what we talked about until now is more of a price response. How you know how do different commercial and industrial customers respond to different prices right. within the day? But now I look at instead of the price response, I look at the temperature response because you know with climate change, right. you know there's a lot of forecasts saying that. The temp temperature might increase in sure. a couple of years, so that's that's why I came up with this topic mm -hmm. and wanted to look at how different sectors actually respond. Mm -hmm. And what I found was that the green line, the merchandising, the retail sector, responds to temperature the most. Yeah, but the, the, that's a striking difference. That is, and it says basically when temperature goes up, the electricity demand of, of essentially stores, mm -hmm. commercial establishments, goes up too. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so that's what this graph shows right here. So as you go to the right of the spectrum, temperature's going higher, and the y-axis shows the response of the consumption. Right, so, and it's probably, air conditioning is probably that's a, right. a big factor there, because yes. stores here leave their doors wide open, and mm -hmm. so. So that's yeah. one of the reasons. Yeah. Okay, whereas hotels, education sector, and grocery all look much more moderate in terms of, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, of their response, right? So they're still responding to right. higher levels of temperatures, just not as much as the merchandising right. sector. And one interesting part is the purple line, actually, that shows the hospitals. Right. And it, I found that hospitals aren't too temperature responsive. Right, yeah, they look the, almost almost flat. Yeah. Almost flat. Yeah. And that makes sense, because hospitals are kept purposely closed, right, because they don't want the germs going out, and they don't want more germs coming on in, so mm -hmm. that they unlike most other businesses here, they don't leave their doors open, right? So Probably not. Yeah. That's right, and at the same time, a hospital um, might be partly required to uh, keep the airflow constant, right. so that uh, regardless of the temperature, they might need to uh, constantly use like air venting and whatnot. Right, that yeah. might explain this flat Exactly, response. exactly. They're, they're always gonna be running a pretty mm -hmm. constant AC cycle yes. and, and mm -hmm. keeping their temperature pretty flat, yeah. Mm -hmm. And another so. reason why you see that for the hospitals is it could be because when you look at their total share of energy usage, maybe unlike the department stores, it's not con fully consistent of AC. Maybe they have other heavy equipment there mm -hmm. that's also energy consuming. Sure. That's, that's not responsive to the temperature. Yeah, right, okay. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. And then, uh, we have a, a, another image that, that's, again, sort of breaking this, this out by sector. Mm -hmm. uh, no, back one image, please. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes, that one. Right, thank you. Um, so t tell us sort of what, what's the takeaway from this? So I particularly like this graph because it shows you the consumption patterns by each sector. So this is actually something that not a lot of people are informed of, and actually I learned about this after I started my, my interning for Hawaiian Electric, and you see that, for example, um, let's use the hospitals. So if you look at the red line, you can see that they use most of their energy during the day. Right. And 
Same with the merchandising sector, but it's not, but it's flat when they're open. So maybe they constantly have AC on during that time, so there's not much fluctuation there. Right. And what the blue line shows is actually Oahu's um, average. So that's okay. what Oahu's, as, an, as a whole, in the aggregate, that's what their electricity consumption pattern looks like. So I'm comparing both to see how they change. Okay, so that is this, the sectoral you're saying is from around across the country? Oh no! It's just Oahu. Okay, I'm I'm not quite clear that what's what's the. So Oahu would include all the business uh, sectors, ah. including hospitals, merchandise, okay, as well as the like, residential sector, like households. Okay, then, then why why on that on that uh, multi graph that we were just looking at, why aren't the blue lines all the same then? If, if in each vote you're saying those are our averages from all the different sectors. Oh, okay. The look might be deceiving, but indeed the blue line is supposed to be the, the same. same. Oh, the, the shape is exactly yeah. the same. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. The only thing that's changing is, is, is the red the line. The red line. So, yeah, I see. But you're right. It's just it's, it's an interesting optical illusion that, yeah, but you're, uh, I see. Okay. That makes, now that, now I see it. Yeah. And so it's, it's very striking, the difference in, in the different, mm -hmm. the different sectors. Uh, do that. So this actually shows, well, this actually can explain why I think you asked, you know, why some consumers face a lower bill mm -hmm. or increased bill when they face a non-flat cost. Mm -hmm. And this graph actually can explain why that's the case, because when you look at, for example, education, they're using more when it actually costs less to Provides exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I get that now. Okay. So education and merchandising are doing pretty much the same patterns here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. High usage during the time when it's less expensive. Exactly. To, to crank up the. So the that's so. one of the reasons why they could be, I guess, benefiting, right. or they experience lower bills under an alternative rate schedule. Okay. And actually, what Asahi finds about the education sector. That might be even more exacerbated into the future as the state of Hawaii integrates more and more renewable energy, right? Or solar power. Yeah, hopefully mm -hmm. solar will keep feeding more energy right. into the grid at mm -hmm. essentially low or no cost. Because with solar power, yeah, yeah, the cost of electricity generation during the daytime would get even lower and right. lower. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And um, last but not least, we we, we have that this pie chart, which looks looks at how sort of how much absolute power uh, the different sectors are using, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm surprised education is a big one. And that includes K-12 yes. and the universities, though, right? So it includes elementary mm -hmm. to college, okay. or universities. Yeah, wow, that's... Uh... Oh, but this graph does not include customers who have solar panels. Ah, okay. So just, just to make a fair comparison. Okay, okay interesting. So yeah, and then you see the other other big. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm surprised that grocery stores and department stores are that small. Actually, really small, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's, that's sort of counterintuitive. Uh, hotels, I understand. Yeah, or they air condition everything. Yes, a so, caveat is that uh, not all customers have uh, the kind of like 15 minute uh, detailed electricity data uh, that we use for this analysis. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pie chart that you look at is the. Uh, sample of customers where we have such data. So those are the big power consumers. Okay, well, hey, this, this has been incredibly uh, educational for me. I, I've learned, learned a ton, I'm sure our viewers, so viewers have. <laughs> uh, thank you so much both for being here. Thank uh, you. Ashwahi, uh, Nori, it's been very nice. And I hope uh, our audience will come back and join us on Likeable Science again next week. Until then.